Well, first off, thanks for joining us, Brad. Um, first off, I just want to get your starts off on this Arkansas team. Um, a lot of people didn't see this coming, but they're off to a 3-0 start for the first time since 2016. Just kind of what are your thoughts on this Razorbacks team and the improvement that the team has made under Sam Pittman? Jonathan, you know, uh, I think we saw it coming a little bit at the beginning of, uh, I should say, at the end of last year when they started playing everybody a little bit closer. And uh, I think there was hope in Fayetteville and, and around the SEC probably that, that that was the beginning of something. And and it was. I mean, uh, Sam's done a great job. Uh, did I see that they were going to be in the top, you know, 20 when we did this game or even if we were going to do this game? I would say, no, I didn't see that coming. <laughs> but, um, you know, he's done a remarkable job. Um, I think uh, the fact that, you know, they came out in the Texas game and just dominated, that opened everybody's eyes. And, uh, you know, now they go into really the meat of their schedule here the next couple of weeks. So uh, we're going to find out in a hurry if it's for real or if it's kind of an aberration. But so far, I think it's for real after watching their tape so far. Um, you know, they're running the ball great. They're controlling the line of scrimmage. I love their defense. And, uh, you know, K.J. Jefferson, I think every week has gotten more and more confident and uh, when that confidence grows sometimes you do things that are not supposed to happen and um, that's probably what 3-0 is right now something that wasn't supposed to happen you mentioned uh in that answer that they're getting into the meat of their schedule it's kind of a unique game to kind of start that sec slate going to dallas playing against texas a&m old southwest conference rivals what do you think this rivalry means for both teams especially coming in now to this setting where they're both in the top 16. Well, I think it's all about this year, you know, and, and I understand that they've been playing forever, and I used to do some of those games back in the day when it was the Southwest Conference, and I know what it means to these uh, folks, you know, from both schools and the Southwest Classic and all of that. But I think you throw that out the window. Um, you know, there this is an SEC game that means a heck of a lot. This is, this is to find out, at least early on, who everybody thinks is going to be of the team to maybe challenge Alabama or to be the second-best team in the West. So um, I think you can put... The other 77 meetings behind them. I, I, yeah, obviously the nine-game winning streak's kind of stuck in Arkansas's throat, and I get that. But um, I don't think that matters right now. I think to these kids uh, and these players, what happens is maybe the fact that all the games have been closer over the last five to seven years, you know, the overtimes and all of that. Uh, really good game last year that just got away at the end a little bit. But they'll remember that, but they're going to remember this one a lot more because I think whoever wins this one, is at least in the driver's seat for a week. You know, I don't know how long that's going to last because you look at Arkansas' schedule and it's it's Georgia next, it's Ole Miss, it's Auburn. You know, I don't know how many of those games they're not going to be favored against Georgia. They're not going to be favored against Ole Miss probably. Auburn maybe at the end of the year, LSU. I think that's at LSU, so that's a question mark, I suppose. But, uh, you know, there's only a handful of games right now that you can actually look at and say Arkansas is going to be favored in those games. So if they pick one off here when they're, uh, you know, small underdog and they do it against a team that was the second best team in the West last year, that puts them on their way and, you know, sets them up, I think, to get more and more confident and, and build on that. And, and who knows what they can do. And with the tough schedule, I feel like a lot of people in Fayetteville maybe didn't have that high of expectations for this team coming into the season. But after the win over Texas and the way they played, it seems like there's been kind of a renewed buzz in Fayetteville, you know, about this Hogs team, about Sam Pittman and, and the program. So what would a win against Texas A&M mean for this team going forward, as you mentioned, with that super tough SEC slate that they have ahead? Well, for one thing, it's going to get, you know, the whole state going crazy as, as, as if they aren't already. And... Um, I think the whole country is taking notice. And, you know, you watch ESPN, CBS, whoever you might watch, and everybody's out on the Arkansas bandwagon you know, and all of that. But it's three games. You know, it's three weeks. But it's been very impressive. Um, I'm a big Sam Pittman fan. I, I'll be honest. You know, Sam was here at Georgia's offensive line coach. I live in Georgia. I guess I shouldn't say here in Georgia. I live in Atlanta. Um, and, you know, he was always kind of one of my favorite guys. And, you know, there's something about uh, – coaches or people in any profession that kind of have always had to just work and work and work and work and never got to that top rung of the ladder, you know, and, um, you know, Sam has really never even been a coordinator before uh, this, you know, recruiting coordinator, maybe under, uh, under coach Bielema and stuff there, but um, just what he's been able to do and, and turn the whole culture around. I mean, I haven't done an Arkansas game. If this gives you an idea, it's been, uh, two networks and three coaches ago the last time I did an Arkansas <laughs> game. So, I mean, I'm pretty excited. I'm just going to get to see Sam again and see what he's built and, uh, you know, the way he's got the program going right now. So, um, I just think, you know, on both sides of the ball, they're really, really impressive. 
and it starts up front. Uh, the offensive line is kind of like that group. Of, you know, when Ragnow and those guys were around, and they had Alex Collins running the ball and that type of thing. And but in this quarterback now with KJ, they got something special. And and you know, I didn't know that. Saw so him play just a little bit, a few snaps last year, and I thought, well, he looks like a really talented guy. But um, I think he's getting more comfortable with his arm. I know his legs. He doesn't have any problem with them. And uh, he's got some weapons around him, you know, uh, Burks and, and Smith. And I, I just think, uh, you know, they're a team capable of going a long way if they just keep doing it what they've been doing and keep grinding like they've been grinding. Taking a sec now to look at the Aggies. Obviously, they lost their starting quarterback against Colorado. Calzada comes in. The offense kind of struggles, but he leads them on that game-winning drive. And then he kind of seems to take a next step in that New Mexico game. Do you think that that's something that he can build off for this Arkansas game? And how do you think that that's going to translate to now playing an SEC defense in not a hostile environment, but certainly a different environment than playing New Mexico at home? Yeah, I think, you know, Jonathan, I think the fact that uh, – uh, he had a whole week to prepare, and he knew he was going to be the man um, after King went down. I think that helps a lot of guys. You know, you come into a situation, and it's, you know, you're really pressed into service, and even though everybody says, you know, be ready because you could be the next man up at any snap, you, know, you, you think that, and you try to prepare that way. But, you know, if I was uh, the number two play-by-play -play guy, and I was getting ready to do this game, and, um, you know, all of a sudden, whoever was doing it in front of me got sick or got hurt in the first quarter. I'd be a little lost because I don't think I prepare like that all week long, to be honest with you. So I think the fact that he got a week to prepare started off a little shaky, but three touchdown passes. You know, that that whole quarterback situation was closer than everybody thinks anyway during the summer. I mean, it, it came down kind of to the end. Um, you know, King has probably got more potential, more ceiling, higher ceiling and that type of thing. But Calzado was you know, in there and, and uh, a guy that was in the mix the whole time. And I think now that he's had the opportunity to get all the reps. Um, but as you said, he's he's going against some really good defensive players in Arkansas. And that's going to be the difference. And, you know, whoever doesn't turn the ball over is probably got a better chance of winning this game than who, than who does. Um, so if they can keep the interceptions down on both sides, I think that would be a big key to the ball game. A big talk this week has been uh, Calzada, but the strength of this Aggie team is the defense, one of the top units in the country against the pass, scoring defense led by DeMarvin Leal. How tough of a matchup is that going to be for this Arkansas offense that you said K.J. Jefferson yeah. has looked like he's been improving, but this Aggie defense is no joke. Yeah, they're really good. They're really good. I mean, they haven't a lot of passing touchdown yet. Um, they haven't given up. 77 yards a game, I guess, through the air. And there's, I don't think there's another team in the country that hasn't given up at least 100 once. So uh, they're sack happy. You know, they're, they're trying to come up with their, their own nickname. They're not quite sure what that's going to be yet, whether it's going to be like the old wrecking crew, wrecking crew under R.C. Slocum and all that. But, um, you know, they force turnovers. They, they sack the quarterback. They do a good job intercepting passes. They create a lot of havoc. Um, and, and that's... You know, that's the way they've been playing since I can remember. And they're just better at it now, and they've got better athletes. So um, protecting the football and establishing the line of scrimmage, I think I think that's key for Arkansas. they got to do what they do. And, you know, if if they can get the run game going, uh, they'll be in good shape. If they can't get the run game going, it could be a long day. But uh, the line of scrimmage, and I think what's happening between the front of A&M and the offensive line of Arkansas probably going to determine a ball game at least – in the first half, you know, and then we'll see what happens. Then it's then it's anybody's ball game. Special teams, turnovers, anything can happen after that. But I think, you know, kind of like the Arkansas Texas game, that was still a ball game for a while. And then Texas got, quite frankly, they got tired of getting blocked and they got tired of trying to tackle people. And if Arkansas could do that to Texas A&M, they got a great shot of winning. Brad, you're on the call for this game, so I won't ask for a final score prediction, but what are you kind of expecting to see when you head to Dallas? And then if you could give us a couple of keys to the game for each team. Well, I think I gave you one. The off the, uh, the line of scrimmage, I think, is, is a key. Um, and I think that's one of the keys for Arkansas. Keep the quarterback clean, establish the run, keep people off Jefferson, even though he can make things happen with his legs. I, I think on defense for Arkansas, probably always know where – 0, 28, and 85 are. That's that's it for them on offense, you know, because I think at Spiller, they got one of the best backs around. Uh, Anaya Smith, I can't figure out if he's wide receiver or back. He plays – last year when we did him, it was completely fit, flipped around. He was, like, in the backfield and caught some passes. Now he's more like uh, as a wide receiver and he's still running the ball. 
And then, you know, Weidermeyer is as good a tight end as you're going to find in the business. So Arkansas defensively, they've got the players, the linebackers. I, I don't know if anybody wants to get, you know, signal uh, uh, kind of squared off one-on-one -on -one with Weidermeyer, but uh, the linebackers for Arkansas probably could get the job done. So um, that would probably be it for me. That's about the best I can do. <laughs> Sounds good, Brad. Brad, I appreciate you joining us. Best of luck on the call on Saturday. You got it, John. I hope uh, everybody has a great weekend. I hope the ball game is everything we hope it's going to be. Hope so, too. Have a good one, Brad.